Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, I'm going to review the updates in 3.17.2 that affect mining, what bug fixes have made it into the most recent patch, and some of the new bugs I've discovered that might complicate your game sessions. The 3.17.2 patch includes a complete reset on your credit balance and inventory, but reputation from previous patches will persist. This means a lot of citizens are going to get back into the grind to re-outfit our ships or purchase those missing pieces of our fleets that we didn't quite have the budget to pledge for. As with every patch, there are a number of new changes that impact mining specifically, so here's my rundown based on my experience in the PTU over the last few weeks. The first, and quite literally, largest addition are the handful of new Lagrange points for the Microtech orbit. These locations are Mike L2, with the Long Forest Station, and multiple points of interest, Mike L3, with the Endless Odyssey Station, Mike L4, with the Red Crossroads Station, and Mike L5, with the Modern Icarus Station. These new Lagrange points expand the navigable universe to its outermost perimeter and give us at least a few more anchor points to travel to when trying to land in the belt or just exploring the outer reaches of Stanton. And second, the way you travel to the Lagrange Point stations has changed. There's now a marker for the main gravity well amidst the Lagrange Point, along with several points of interest with alphabetical suffixes inside the shared gravity well, like Mike L2A, Mike L2B, and Mike L2C. Most Lagrange Points only have the one main point of interest where you'll find the main asteroid field and space station. However, Crew L2, Mike L1, and Mike L2 each have multiple points of interest that can be explored. Like the moons around a planet, you won't be able to quantum travel directly to the station anymore. Instead, when you arrive at the main gravity well, you'll actually stop around 40 kilometers short of the destination, and then you'll be able to take the final jump to the specific point of interest. This adds another quantum travel step when traveling between mining sites and refinery stations so I'd recommend making it a habit to directly select the refinery station when charting a navigational path. That way, you won't run into issues calibrating to the station once you're inside the gravity well. It's also worth noting that this will make it more challenging for pirates to find players traveling to a refinery, as the interdicting ship will need to be almost perfectly aligned with the direction of approach. The short quantum jump from the main gravity well to the point of interest is too short for a quantum interdiction to work, but Enterprising pirates will find other ways to work around it. If you're specifically worried about piracy, you can always jump towards a different destination first so that you aren't approaching on a frequently traveled route. Next, there are a few new refinery stations scattered throughout the verse. These refinery stations are Arc L2, Lively Pathway Station, Arc L4, the Faint Glen Station, Mike L2, Long Forest Station, and Mike L5, the Modern Icarus Station. Mike L2 and Mike L5 are part of the Lagrange points that were added to this patch, while Arc L2 and Arc L4 have both been around for a while. While I'm generally happy to see new refineries, these new additions are actually fairly disappointing as the only bonus or downside they offer is a severe penalty for Quantanium Yield, with Mike L5 also having a penalty for Titanium Yields. There are no yield bonuses for any materials, and the 20-25% yield hit is well outside the range of downsides that other refineries burden players with. This could be CIG signaling that they think Quantanium is too profitable, but in my opinion, there are many better ways to balance the game economy if that's what they're trying to do. And wrapping up the major additions, all of the R&R space stations in the verse have been updated with small and medium-sized hangars. Anytime you request a landing at a space station now, you'll be directed to one of these enclosed hangars. There are a few landing pads still available that you can land at without requesting permission, and they allow restock, refuel, and repair. Now that your ship starts off in a hangar, you don't have to do the walk through vacuum to get in and out of your ship, and hopefully there will be a few less suffocation deaths to those new players who forget to put their helmet on. Or at least, you won't be dying at the space station. Always remember your helmet. This makes it more difficult to get your vehicle impounded intentionally, which I refer to as the valet parking method. However, you can still hover near a hangar door if you're intent on beating that volatile material timer. And now for the bug fixes. Mole extraction is now working, and I can say that the mole is fully functional. Starting in 317.1, the mole cargo capacity didn't function, 
meaning that you could spend an entire mining trip surveying and fracturing, but when you started to extract, the materials would just disappear. The cargo now functions properly, and I did several runs on the PTU build without issue, so I can officially confirm that the mole is back. Refinery shop UIs are also now functional. Hey, this was particularly painful, as the refinery shop terminals could not be interacted with, leaving us with a miserable supply of mining modules, gadgets, and devices. And honestly, the refinery shops were the primary location most of us would head to when stocking up. The terminals are now fixed in 317.2, so no more stocking up at Tammany and Sons. Refuel and repair also appear to work consistently now. This one was a minor annoyance, but previously, if your refuel wasn't working, you would have to take off and find another pad to land on. Since I've started testing, I've noticed that the restock, refuel, and repair are now working more consistently in 317.2 PTU and have been able to refuel and repair every time that I've wanted to. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment below if there's something that wasn't clear or might have changed in future game versions. There are also some ongoing bugs from previous patches that you can still expect to run into. Jettison Cargo only works under certain conditions. In the Prospector, there doesn't seem to be a Jettison Cargo interaction button anymore. Instead, you have to jettison with Alt-J keybind while you're in mining mode. The keybinding is shared with the chaff countermeasure during normal operation, so you have to be in mining mode for it to work. In the mole, the pilot has to wait until the red alarm sounds and the jettison cargo interaction button will appear over the blinking warning light. For some reason, the interaction button just doesn't show up before then. The turret operators have no control option to jettison material, so it's entirely up to the pilot. Without the benefit of the mining mode toggle in the pilot seat, you are entirely at the mercy of the little red light of doom. It doesn't make sense that the ability to dump your cargo has specific conditions. I would rather have the option to jettison cargo whenever I want it, especially if I find something out in the field that's more valuable than what I'm currently carrying. The Multurret UI has also shrunk, making it difficult to see material percentage numbers or the optimal window bar. Although it's frustrating that the default UI has gotten so small, there is a workaround. You can press left shift while in a turret to use the instant zoom feature, or bind it to another controller under turret advanced, turret instant zoom option. This zooms in just enough to make things legible and provides a nice, effective workaround with the added benefit that you might be able to target rocks with a bit more precision. Spawning ships and hangars can sometimes leave them floating above the pad, making it completely inaccessible. This frequently happens after you've left your engine on while storing the ship, and it's always a good habit to shut your engines off anytime you exit the pilot seat. If you notice this happening, there is a way to recover your ship without having to file an insurance claim. First, go back to the ASOP terminal and store your ship. If it doesn't let you store the ship, Try pulling a different ship, and the station should automatically store the old ship when placing the new one. With your ship stored, remove the power plant from the ship in the outfitting window, then pull the ship again. Head out to the hangar, and your ship should now be sitting nicely on the landing pad. Enter the pilot seat, and shut the engines off, then exit the ship and store it again. With the ship stored, you can now re-outfit the power plant. The next time you pull your ship, the engines will be off, and you'll be able to board it properly. And finally, unscannable rocks are still a thing. Not only are unscannable asteroids still around, but now the same issue appears to affect surface deposits. There were rumors of a fix in the early 317-1 PTU that didn't fully address the issue, and I saw the same thing happening throughout the entire 317-2 PTU cycle. At this point, I'm just going to assume that unscannable rocks are going to be around forever. They're here, there's many reasons why they happen, and CIG will continue the endless bug squashing on the latest reason why a rock won't give up its secrets. And there you have it, my rundown of the major changes affecting mining in 317.2. There may be additional bugs that I don't catch during PTU, so check the pinned comment below in case I've made an update, and leave your own comment if you notice something that I might have overlooked. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Discord, and now Patreon by following the links in the description. I'd also like to thank my Patreon members for their ongoing support of the channel. And lastly, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because you're not worried about a wipe.
you're a mining expert and you're ready to hit the ground running. 